Bryant Agricultural Enterprise is a third-generation family farm in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Annual commodity production consists of corn, soybeans, and wheat. At Bryant Ag, we strive to produce the highest yields possible while utilizing superior land stewardship practices which help ensure land productivity for future generations. You know, we both grew up on a farm around livestock, had chores every day, uh, both took a, a, an interest in it. Um, you know, just really had a passion for doing what we did, you know, for the farm and an agriculture background. So, but our father seen that we took a, a great interest in it, I soon felt like we did a good job. So, <laughs> we developed a partnership uh, with you know, Mike and I and our wives and, and our mother and father. And, uh, basically put the family together. Uh, the benefits for that were just sharing machinery and cost and you know the accounting and be able to track things uh, a lot quicker than if we were all individual. So you know we made a determination to do that and that's kind of what we've done all the way through. You know we've got employees that we want to take care of um, so we want to make sure it's a an open conversation, uh, treat everybody fair, and make sure that they are very informed in what's going on in their land. Well, as, as far as our relationship with our employees, that they are what we are about. I mean, without them, kind of, <laughs> but it's, it's just hard to get to where we want to be if we don't have good employees. Mm -hmm. We treat our employees very well. We treat them like family. They are family. There's nothing that none of us would do for them if they needed help. And there's nothing they would do for us. I, I, that relationship is is very important to us. We want to build long-term relationships with our employees, with our landowners, with our suppliers, and we want to instill that all the way through the board. Well, there's time to stuff. <laughs> For the most part, it's been it's been an ideal fit. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, he likes the inside stuff. He likes the deal making, the books, uh, that 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 pressure. I'm more like the outside, just making sure stuff is down the outside. He likes working late. I don't like working so late. So it, it's, it's just like it, it really mixes well. I always said it's, it's, you know, it's almost like a match made in heaven. It's for everything that Mike said, you know, we're kind of opposites, okay? But probably the one thing um, that, that I think is the most important is that we trust each other. In order to create a profitable return for our landowners, the most cutting-edge technology, agronomics, and environmental practices available are utilized. Bryant Ag Enterprise continuously strives to maximize operating efficiencies to help us make the most precise environmental and economical decisions for optimal crop production. At a sheriff's auction during the Great Depression, Albert Bryant purchased the land for his son, John. And since then, Bryant Agricultural Enterprise has developed into a third-generation, modern-day farm operation looking to expand in years to come. Bryant Agricultural Enterprise will strive to grow a business that can be shared among the farming family and shared with future generations. We are a large operation, but we still do a lot of the small things, even though we're large. I mean, 20 years ago, we used to, during fall harvest, we'd go to my mom's house and eat supper every night. There wasn't that many, there was just eight or 10 of us at that time. But now, we still do supper, but it's on a larger, larger scale. But there's just a lot of stuff that, that we wrap into that now that we kind of got started years ago by family. But doing family things, and we, and we still do that today. I'd say that we are truly a family farm is because we are multi-generation, okay? We're, we're constantly bringing in, you know, Mike's wife, my wife are partners in the business. You know, we're bringing in the next generation with Casey and Heath. You know, when, when you ask about technological changes that, that you know, we have experienced, that probably the first thing that comes to mind is, is, you know, how much faster things change today than what they did in the past. If you didn't have a set of scales to, to know what the field made, I mean, you just kind of guessed. Okay, you count, count wagon loads or, you know, bins, dumps coming off the combine. I mean, you know, all those things, you just didn't have that technology. But today, you know, in real time, we can see exactly what's going on. Yes, it just amazes me. Back 
when I started farming, there was two real corn pickers. I mean, I was literally getting in the wagon, pushing, you know, corn out to what it is today. It's just amazing. It's mind boggling. <laughs> Agriculture just changes the whole. Um, you know, there's just a lot happening and it's an exciting field. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities uh, in ag today, not only for us as a family to farm, but if you're, if you're somebody out there looking, you know, coming out of college, I think the world is quite open in agriculture. Landowners are top priority with Bryant Ag, and we consider it a privilege to be stewards of their land. We strive to maintain a prosperous relationship that not only benefits our landowners by providing a fair return for their assets, but also cultivates pride in their association with Bryant Agricultural Enterprise. In the years to come, we expect to increase the size of our operation through continued expansion, but doing so in a positive way, so that Bryant Ag's reputation of integrity, honesty, and hard work is not diminished. Success will be measured by continued increase in operating profit, maintaining efficient operation, consistency in our working capital, and providing a well-run business for our landowners, employees, family, and ourselves. I came here in September of 2009. I'm currently the office manager. Um, do all the deposits, pay all the bills, try to keep things organized. Just enjoy every day. Very relaxed, everybody gets along. It's a fun place to come every day. It's not like a job, but I think that is also connected with the fact that it's agriculture. I love this business, always have. That's why I've stayed so long. It's a wonderful place. I can't say enough about the family. They're, they're great people and it's just a great place to spend your time. The fun part about this, when you think about it, the interaction that I have with Grandpa Bryant now that makes me want to cry. We've taught him to use an iPhone. <laughs> I mean, and we got him a Facebook page that says Brian Agriculture. And I think that's cool that he's almost 80 years old and he loves this place. And Griff's able to experience a dream that we would he would never have had these experiences without John and Mark and Mike and Casey and Heath and the whole crew. So it's fun for me. I don't see him every day, but I know he's here and I know he's living the life. So how good does it get? Um, operations manager, been here for 19 years. Better work environments that I've ever worked in, just simply by the, or because of the people that you work with. Everybody here treats everyone exceptionally well. Um, everyone gets rewarded well for a job well done. You know, there's a lot of fringe benefits to things here other than actual pay, but the work environment here is. Um, really good because you got some of the best equipment to work with. Um, you're not constantly fixing and repairing things. Everything is well maintained from top to bottom. Favorite part about my job is I guess the opportunity to have a job such as this, um, the challenges. Um, I look forward to that. It's not a nine to five job. So I, I think for me personally, that's what I like the best. You know, challenging individuals and seeing the reward in the end. My relationship with the Bryants uh, started out uh, back in the early 80s uh, when the farm economy had been very uh, challenging and I was a young loan officer working in Washington Courthouse and uh, was trying to gain uh, insight into the county and the community and. Uh, I met a guy by the name of John Bryant. They've been with me uh, as, as clients and friends and customers uh, since the early 1980s in technology. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, if I go back to what we were doing when I started out in the, in the ag finance business and the things we were trying to do, it, it, the numbers don't change, the, the process doesn't change, but the way we get there and the amount of information that we have at our fingertips uh, is just un unbelievable. I think you know when, when you're a part of their operation, you truly are um, on the inside. Uh, I don't think you find very many large-scale operations that have the passion 
and the compassion that, that this operation has, in my opinion. I just think they do a, a fabulous job of not only taking care of uh, the land that they, they're entrusted with, but also the relationships that go along with it. And I think that really does set them apart. Bright Agricultural Enterprise is very proud to be involved in such an ever-changing industry and have the ability to evolve as it changes. Through wise planning, excellent financial management, valuable experience, and the motivation to succeed, we move forward with confidence in our ability. Other things may change us, but we begin and end with family. There's times when it's tense, but at the end of the day, we all get along, we all love each other, and it all works out. Um, and that's the nice part is we can actually walk out the door, take our business hat off, and sit down and talk to each other at the dinner table about family stuff. If I go to my parents for dinner, it's me with my mom and dad, not me with my boss. Um, I get to see a different side of him. I think that I did just as his daughter, and the same thing I think Keith can say, when you get to work underneath your parents, it's like you really appreciate all the sacrifices that they made in order to give us the life that we were blessed to grow up with. What drew me back, though, I don't think I ever went away. I was It was something that, uh, as a young kid, whenever I could walk, I always was farming on the carpet um, of the of my siblings, I was probably the one, am the one that was always involved in farm in the farm. So I never really thought of anything other than to go farm. Um, I think that's kind of what's driven me probably more than anything is just uh, not having that same thing to do every day, a change of pace, and constantly um, striving for more each time. Uh, Dad worked out of our our basement. His office was down there, and I remember. On Saturdays, all three hours out the day, people knocking on our door, whether it was seed seal dealers or um, you know bankers, anybody that was coming by, equipment dealers, and they'd want to visit with him. And I just thought that was awesome that you know his job never stopped. It didn't matter that it was five o'clock in the evening, and, and that's the that's really what I took interest in. And a lot like our father's relationships, I think Heath and I are just a perfect match. I mean, he he loves loves the operation side of things, really has a great understanding of, of um, the crop and what needs to be done in the field. And I just have such a passion for, for the inside, um, the business end of things. The and in the end, I think that's why if you come back and visit with us 20 years from now, we'll still, still be here because, because of that trust and that relationship that we have together um, is very, very important. The land that our land partners provide and trust, and trust in us to farm um, it's just so important and allows us to do what we love to do. Uh, for me, it's probably the technology. Yeah. To come for, uh, like she said, on the <clears throat> on the operation side, it, it's going to come a point in time where I'm going to be sitting right here and probably everything's going to be done out there and there won't be hardly, you know, or there won't be any operators in the machine. I mean, they've got machines out there now. So I think just the, it, it, the technology that is to come and what it's going to, offer and how it's going to help us improve our bottom line. I think I'm most excited about the relationships. It's interesting to see there's some people that we work with that still want to work with Grandpa because he started that relationship and then there's a lot of people today that we work with that you know have the relationship with our fathers and I think it's just really interesting because I noticed that when people call the office and they say can I talk to Heath or can I talk to Casey and it's not John, Mark or Mike it's really exciting to me because that means that um, we're kind of starting to do our jobs, and I mean, my my grandpa really, from what I heard from dad, he st he started to step down when he was felt like they were ready to kind of take over and, and move forward and make it their own dream, and I think that I'm excited for that to take place with us. <laughs> you know, do you? Need, I mean, that's, that was, I mean, the acres is that something to look into? No, I wouldn't spend the extra money because you don't need them. Um, the more acres of corn you're planting. That's what that's what was my point. So you just set one, park one. <clears throat> Heath, park. you're yeah, you're going to come to a point when you're going when you're spraying this this spring. Mm -hmm. If you need a sprayer or a truck driver, you're gonna take it from the corn planter or the bean planter, the big bean. You're gonna take one of those guys and go, you got more than enough planting yeah. capability to to do that. Just because we got it, we don't have to run. And, and one yeah. of them can sit in the barn back there all fall, and all and the only time you could use it is when something does break down. You save hours on so you can push you will have to trade it in, obviously, mm -hmm. but you may not have to trade all four at once. Yeah. You know, you just leave it there and you use it, but it's, it's keeping the NRs down and spreading them out across everything. So, and, and that's what we've got to relay to you guys, mm -hmm. that we're okay with that, we understand. 
you know, to try to take some of that pressure off. Yeah. I know it's easy to say right now. <laughs> I'll no, no. you so <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, all those right. things will have to get adapted. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you don't, you know, if we're sitting here May 1st and you haven't turned the wheel, this conversation is different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. But, you know, sitting here today plan for just a normal spring, you know, halfway normal, we just need to concentrate on those things. Mm -hmm. Same as nothing, but you're getting a lot more value on this one. So which is the best option? Is it to keep them all the same, have a three or four of them high hours and three or four low hours. So my, so my, my challenge to you guys is do you guys need to answer that question for yourselves. <clears throat> so in other words, that, that's a matter of making a few phone calls <clears throat> to your equipment dealer, to Nick, um, mm -hmm. and say, okay, what is, what kind of a breakdown do you see doing a little research? And then you answer that question. Mm -hmm. Well, when I, I uh, graduated out of high school in 1956, enlisted in the Army, and I had a appendicitis attack and had to have my appendix out. And so then I went for my physical. They couldn't, they wouldn't take me on kind of just been operated on. So then in, the, in that, I had a step grandfather that uh, had a stroke and died and he had a 250 acre farm. And I ended up, I guess I decided uh, I was going to farm it. We, we was corn and beans and, and wheat and um, hogs and cattle. We had, we had a feed lot and we normally kept about 500 head of cattle on feed all the time up the road here. In the, late, in the, in the 70s, by well, then the grain prices, whenever, uh, I think it was Earl Butts, was a farm, uh, was a secretary of agriculture. You wanted to farm fence row to fence row. So then that's when we started getting out of livestock and uh, our, the hog and cattle business. And one thing, that, one thing that got us out maybe a little quicker, we had a snowstorm in 1977 that all the, everybody had, all 41 here had fences. And the snow was so bad they took bulldozers and just pushed the snow off the road. Well, when they was pushing the snow off, they took the fences with them. So that kind of maybe helped you change your mind. <laughs> and uh, of course, my daughter had already graduated and she went on to school and she went on to work for Madison Seed Company and some different companies around. But uh, Mark graduated and then we got, in 1987, we got in the vegetable business. We was in, in it for four years, and uh, we had to get out of it. It was, it was just, it just wasn't going to work in our operation or work here, this far south. As far as when Brian Ag started, it started right in that uh, time frame too. At that time, I was kind of pretty well burned out. I just told the boys, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you do what you want to do, and this is what's good to do today. We, we, we started getting, like I said, I, I took that, turned the assets on with the kids, and I said, I said, I'll do anything you want me to do, only you guys make the decisions. And so, that's, this is where we got to. Yeah. When I got out of making decisions, and they started one. We've got a wonderful situation where we've got, uh, Mark does the inside, and takes care of the banking, and, and that, and that, and green market, that kind of stuff, his brother, puts his input in, but Mike kind of takes care, and Mike's more or less the outside man. And it, it's a good working, and Mike's the oldest of the two, but it's a good working relationship. But then we, we're fortunate, we got blessed with good grandkids, and uh, I've got Mike's oldest son is in the operation, and Mark's second daughter is in the operation. And they're both assuming the roles that their dad's had. Mm -hmm. He's more the outside man in case he's gonna be the inside person. Yeah. Well, I never dreamed they'd be farming this about eight years. Yeah. And the way it's just times is the way it is, and, and, and they'll probably be farming more acres. I'm not, I'm out of all that, but I can see where technology has really been a, a, a lifesaver to us. And, and they're running the whole farm off the iPhone. I mean, and I know the guys will come to work every morning, but their work orders are already on the phone. They can, they, they, you know, they'll stand out and talk a little bit, but then, well, we, and they look at their phone, they'll, we got, they start go do what they're going to do that day. But you've got to have employees that understand it. And we have got employees that understand it. I don't understand it. But, uh, but, uh, but anyhow, I, 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 uh, I'm in the industry, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I uh, it's, uh, they get in, you know, they can, they can pull up on that TV every farm they farm. I'm not here over half the time, if I'm half, I'm not here, we're not here half the time probably. So. They, they can't wait around for me to, to, but if, and I'm allowed to walk in on any meeting, if, if they're having any kind of meeting, I'm allowed to walk in on, so. But we have rules and I, I follow.
Was it hard for you to turn it over to No, it wasn't. Was no, like, it, was, it was not. Yeah. No, it was not. I, I know it was time because I've seen older people hang on and then the kids get dissatisfied and this and that and I decided that wasn't going to happen to us. I got my older ones playing with that nine-year-old grandson. He, great-grandson, I think he'll farm. He'll, he'll, he'll step in with his dad. His dad runs the outside. Uh, I don't know, my, my uh, granddaughter's got two boys. One of them might even, uh, they won't right now, but you can see them, they, they've got good heads on their shoulders, so we just, you never know. He just was with his dad all the time. And Mike was, and Mark was both with me all the time. Well, Mike was probably more, with me more than what Mark was, but they were both with me. You, you can't get, have them all back. I mean, you know, there's not room for them. So it makes it nice if some of them do want to spread out and do something else. So that, that's good. But they're all successful, so what else can you ask? <laughs> and my granddaughters and grand, grandsons are, are successful, so. Mark's got a, well, that's a nurse practitioner in Stanford University, his oldest daughter. Of course, Casey's here. And he's got one, one beautician. She, 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 two girls went to Wright State, and the uh, first two, and then uh, maybe they went. She wasn't happy. She didn't like it. She came home one day and, and uh, said, I don't like it. I won't be a beautician. Well, her first time they changed the snap of the finger. And she just happened to go lucky now. She's getting a little fun, getting a little beautiful. Well, it's uh, a farmer being. <clears throat> It's been, they've been taught right to take care of ground right and they're taking care of it right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm seeing that every day. They, they do things that need to be done in a timely manner.